Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Kyle. And I'm Dr. Alvaro Rimunde, and we're from Pediatric Associates of Kingston. And let's talk about food introduction in babies. So there's been a lot said about, you know, and some confusion, so to speak, on foods that are, quote, hyperallergenic. So those foods that are more apt to cause allergies. Right. When do we introduce them? How? Because, and how, right? Because I can tell you that, you know, when I first started training, and I feel a little old now saying that, <laughs> but, um, you know, there was a very strict way on, on, on introduction of uh, hyperallergenic foods because we were nervous that if we gave them too early to children, it might cause th- some allergies. Correct. And so, you know, there's very certain times you don't want to give it until after a year of age Correct. because, you know, what if the child has an allergy early on and even breastfeeding mothers, you know, right. not giving them, not having them the breastfeeding moms eat mm-hmm. uh, certain hyperallergenic foods because it could be passed through the breast milk. I Definitely. think there's been a huge change with An that. overhaul. It's completely changed. And um, when I speak about this in the office, I get many looks from, especially from grandmas. Because <laughs> like, that's not how I raised my child and that's not what I was told. Right, um, right. But, but you know, as the years go, uh, go by, there's more and more re- research and we see more and more kids and we, we learn a lot more, right? Um, so we have uh, actually noticed, or I guess uh, found out, that by introducing some of these hypoallergenic foods into the baby's diet a little bit earlier, we might actually be helping prevent the development of these allergies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really, we are becoming a more global society, and when you look at it, you know, from from uh, our commerce to people you know, going to different countries, flying, and we've just become a global society. I think one of the things that we're understanding through different population studies is that every country does something a little different, Mm -hmm. but it's all okay, because everyone grows up fine, and I think there's to be less stress about introducing certain foods. I agree. We know in Israel, people that got their, you know, they eat tons of peanuts from an early age, and in China, they introduce nuts early, Mm -hmm. much less. And fish. Yes, and there's much less peanut allergy in those populations. So I think that's, you know, we're starting to recognize that, you know, there's, people do it differently, but everyone does okay. Right, so um, so going into that, so what age should we start introducing uh, right. even just regular foods in, in, for babies? Um, and I think the general consensus is um, anywhere between four to six months of old, depending on the baby's maturity level. Some babies... Right are able to hold their heads up a little bit higher and are, are a little bit sturdier at four months. If they seem to be interested in, in foods, we may be able to start a little bit uh, at that age. But it, I think it's also important to realize that we shouldn't be replacing bottles at this age um, or, or breast milk. This is just food introduction. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so they should be still getting um, the, their amount of uh, calories from formula and or breast milk as per usual. Right. And the introduction of those hyperallergenic foods definitely can be as early as when they are starting to eat solid foods, somewhere right. in that four to six month range. Right. You know, um, and really the important thing is that um, the immune system sees those hyperallergenic foods, whether it's uh, peanut peanut product, peanut derivative, mm-hmm. or eggs, or something like that, early. But then also that they're seeing it repeatedly. Right. So it's not that oh, I gave my baby peanut butter or peanut derivative at six to seven months and they didn't have a reaction so they're fine. So, you got to give it several times a week. Right. So so the immune system um, will usually make that response of hives or a rash usually the second or third time we try food or are exposed to an allergen. Um, so I think, I think before when we used to introduce foods, we used to start with uh, the baby foods, and we would probably do green veggies, and then work our way up to the lighter color veggies, and then starts the fruits and things like that. But I think now um, we can pretty much start with pretty much any mm-hmm. any food that you can mash and make into that baby food consistency. Uh, but I think the the key idea would be to not introduce more than one of those high hypoallergenic foods at a time. So I wouldn't introduce, for example, peanut butter the same day I would start strawberries. Mm-hmm. Um, I would give uh, the body a chance to acclimate. I think that's with any food. In Correct. Particularly, you should be waiting. You know, I generally say five to seven days, mm-hmm. um, and that's just my personal right. opinion there um, before introduction of, of any food. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, 
with the introduction of, of peanut, um, you know, it doesn't, not that you're giving your baby peanut butter at six months, you know, just putting a little bit on a spoon, mixing it into something mm -hmm. so it just gets a little bit of it in the food itself. Right. Or even peanut powder is something they can right. use. Mm -hmm. And then eggs, of course, when they're eating more solid foods. Right. Um, it just goes along naturally with the progression of how they're able to take their textured foods yep. and as they mature. So, um, right. so really, people shouldn't be afraid to it's give foods. Days. The caveat, though, is I think if there's a um, strong family history of some allergy uh, to some food, whether it be eggs or whether it be nuts or peanuts, that they should discuss with their pediatrician about that introduction. Right. So that's the one thing I, I think that they should discuss. Yeah. And if your child were to have an allergy after trying one of these foods, um, go ahead and give a dose of Benadryl. Um, but call the pediatrician first. But always have Benadryl on hand, because once you call the pediatrician, we'll be able to tell you the dose of Benadryl to, to take and whether or not to go to the ER if necessary. Mm -hmm. But all in all, just through personal experience, I don't know how it is with mm -hmm. your patient population. In a family who does not have a strong family history of a food allergy, oh, yeah. and they get these foods, I haven't really seen I haven't a either. severe I seen any reaction cases. to anything that, that would prompt an anaphylactic event. Yeah. But something I think you should watch for. Definitely.